Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita and I have two Homeworks candles for you today. One of them is one that's readily available on the Homeworks website and that is Apricot, Nectar, and Wild Berry. And then I have one more that I picked up at Marshall's that is not readily available anywhere but TJ Maxx and Marshall's but I still wanted to talk about it because you may be able to find it. And that is this one, Climbing Clematis. I don't know if you can see that. My camera is having a lot of trouble um, focusing. I don't know, maybe it was like one of those Apple updates. I don't know, it ruined everything. They always do, you know. There'll be another patch at some point I gotta apply. All right, so these are the two that I have been burning. And this one, there's been some buzz about this one. I actually picked this up on Macy's.com. Was it Macy's? No, it was Amazon.com. It is not being sold currently at Macy's. It is sold at Amazon and they were running like a 40% off like coupon off of it. So I think I got it for like 17 or 18 bucks. Um, it's not like an amazing price, it's frankly about what it is that you would spend on one at Marshall's though. I think the, tic the ticket price or the sticker price at Marshall's now is like $16.99. So not a whole lot more than that. Um, generally speaking, these sell for a little bit more on Amazon. So I think that the sticker price for homeworks.com um, the shop.com is $30 if it's not already discounted for these particular um, four wicks. Um, and it's 32 on Amazon. And they kind of help offset or subsidize the cost of shipping. But when it's running like a nice coupon off Amazon, you might get it for a whole lot less. So anyway, close parentheses. I got this one from Amazon. It was very highly recommended by someone who reviews candles that I very much respect thought it was a fantastic candle, so I went ahead and picked it up. I don't really like it very much, um, but let's talk about the scent notes. So the scent notes here are apricot nectar, <laughs> which is what we would expect, fresh picked strawberries, wild blueberry, and whipped cream. Those are the ones. Now right off, I'm gonna tell you that I'm not smelling any whipped cream at all period. This is not a creamy candle. The only creaminess that you're going to get from it is kind of like um, the creaminess of an apricot, frankly, um, because the apricot can sometimes um, invoke or come across as creamy. Um, those light stone fruits like peach and nectar. Um, so you could get some creaminess from that, but frankly, I'm getting a lot of really pretty unmixed berryness in this. It's a lot of berry juice, like a lot. It's not being cut by anything. I don't detect any vanilla, like none of that. So if you're in it for the cream or the vanilla, this is probably not your candle. I was actually a little bit relieved by that because it would have gone in a very gourmand direction and I'm not a gourmand girl. Um, so I was happy with that. It is extremely berry forward. So the strawberries and the blueberries, for sure. I don't, I think strawberry and blueberry are actually right on. Because I don't think that it's blackberry and I actually don't think it's like raspberry either. They aren't quite tart enough, although they have like a certain kind of tartness because you just, it's just very berry forward and it's fresh. As in, they're not m macerated. Like, I'm not detecting a whole lot of like sugar add-ins. And in that sense, like very natural. Um, but there is something very powerful about this candle as well. And I think that the dominant note, especially when it's burned, is the apricot. And that's what I'm not loving, to be honest. When it's burned, it comes across as a, a little bit sour. There's a sourness and I don't know how else to explain it. It's just sour. Like, um, I'm not gonna invoke the 
idea of stomach bile, but I just said it. There's, there's just something about the apricot that feels a little like it's turning. Like maybe it's a little overripe or something like that. Uh, it's not good. I'm not a huge apricot fan, but I, I don't mind it. And I actually think it's like a really unique and interesting um, kind of smell. I generally prefer peach, although peach is a very hard thing in a candle to like really nail. Apricot seems to be a little bit more forgiving. Oh my gosh, that Aldi candle, apricot and oud. I have been burning that in my candle crock at work for like the last two weeks. I am obsessed. Aldi, and I said this at the time when I reviewed it, that apricot oud candle, any candle company would be lucky to have a fragrance like that in their catalog. It was so, it's sophisticated. That one does have a little bit of creaminess in it, like a true, like milk-like creaminess. And it's got that oud wood that's austere and that like cuts it. And so maybe, maybe there's something about the oud and the cream that like just goes really well with the apricot because the apricot is like very sweet and very yellow for lack of a better term. <laughs> it's just, it's very fragrant almost to the point of being floral and um, yeah, maybe it needs some grounding notes. And unfortunately the strawberry and the blueberry here are not grounding. They're just up kind of in the same very sweet like bright range with apricot. And so there isn't enough here to balance. And actually, um, Harry Slatkin's candles are usually extremely balanced. I love it when he balances too, like the botanical and the flowers with the fruit. Like he has a really good nose for what fragrances need to be offset with another one. And this one just has no relief. It's just all like sugary and berry up in here, very linear and it, there's just no relief from it. And like I said, the apricot fragrance here, something is off about it. It just, it's just turning. Mm, I, I, I don't love it. I just really don't. I don't, I don't know. Maybe some people will like it because it is so very berry, <laughs> so very berry. And it is very fresh and it does not smell synthetic. I will say all of those, it smells very authentic. Like these, like these fruits are all just like cut in a bowl and you can just smell all of them and they're all just in the height of their power. But like I said, in the case of the apricot, something seems a little off. I didn't love the performance on this either. I'm not gonna lie to you. So um, the throw wasn't great on this. I would say it was probably in the five realm, maybe 5.5. I don't know if it got up to a six. In this case, like I'm not unhappy about it because I don't know that I was absolutely loving the fragrance, um, but that's what you've got. So if you do like this, and there will be many people that do, I would suggest making this a blending candle. So I really think that it would help if it was blended with some sort of cream element. And that can be some sort of vanilla candle for sure. So if you can do that um, and burn them in conjunction, I think you're gonna get a better strength, a better throw, and you're going to be able to invoke what it is that Harry Slacken wanted to with the whipped cream on the end of it. I just don't think the whipped cream is coming forward. Not in the way that in some of his other candles it does. So I think that that's a good intuition, but you're gonna have to burn it in tandem. Don't expect wonders on this candle. Other than that, it's burned pretty well. Um, I'm not getting really like any sooting or anything, and I've gone down pretty far at this point, so. That's that one. I would not repurchase it again. Climbing Clematis, and remember this is the Marshalls one. Um, and the scent notes for this one are Clematis Flower, which is this like blue flower, um, Hyacinth, Muguet, which is Lily of the Valley, and Sandalwood. Um, and they're very odd and misleading notes. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. So really, there's hardly anything floral about this candle. Um, 
despite the hyacinth and the clematis flower. I don't think the clematis flower actually naturally has a whole lot of fragrance to it. With the climbing nature of it, because it is a vine-like flower plant, I think the climbing is, <laughs> I think Harry Slatkin got carried away with climbing. So this is a vine candle. This is a vine candle. And I would just dispense with the flower entirely. This could be like English ivy or something like that. And if it was that, it would make a great deal more sense. So it's very green. And honestly, it comes across as more savory than it does sweet. This could very easily be tomato vine, but it doesn't even have the sweetness of a tomato. <laughs> so the tomato vine candles that I have that I've smelled um, have this amazing note, many of them do, but they also have a little bit of sweetness that is coming from like a, a cherry tomato. This doesn't even have that. I mean, this is really just vine and it's peppery, like um, green pepper, for instance. Oh yeah, I mean, it's savory. It's just, it's, it's truly the closest that I have smelled from Harry from being like a tomato vine candle. Almost a little bit herbal, but like I said, I think green pepper is probably mostly what you're smelling there. And that's it. I'm not getting sandalwood. I'm not getting any floral. It's mainly just a very nice vine. Because of the fact that it seems linear and fairly one note, I would say that the throw on this was also in the six realm. I would say it was about a six. Um, topped out at a six, and it might sometimes have been a 5.5. And frankly, it's not surprising given um, the particular fragrance that it is. That said, it was a very consistent six. It burned like a dream. Um, and I love botanicals and I love tomato vine. So if you are, if you see this at Marshall's and you're always kind of hankering for a tomato vine candle, especially in the spring or in the early summer, or just in the summer, pick this up. Despite the marketing, there's really nothing floral about it. And it's beautiful. This came out about the same time. There was a whole like flower line that Harry Slatkin did, and I can't remember when it was, like maybe three, four, four years ago. It was a while back, and it was a very successful line. This was in that particular line, and apparently, I mean, I've smelled several of them. It was really magical. Um, and I think that this is thoughtful. I think it's sophisticated. I think it's great. It's just not very complex because it's really giving you one thing. This would be another great blending candle, especially if you have a very floral candle that only has the flower dimension. This would be a great one to add to it to give it more of a full, balanced, botanical kind of experience, which I really love because floral is okay, but it can get very heavy and very sweet if it's just the flower, depending upon what that flower is. This would be a great one to cut it, and it's a savory green at the same time. So it's really, like I said, if you've got a very strong, heavy kind of flower, some of your white florals, for instance, lilac, there's several that are like overpowering. I would definitely, this would be an amazing candle to mix with it. So if you see this at Marshall's, that would be great. I, by the way, this was poured in January of this year for what it's worth. So it was obviously a repour of an older candle. This one was poured um, in December of 2022. Um, the only other thing that I want to say is that I so far have been most impressed with Harry Slatkin's candles that are old. <laughs> there are a lot that I'm encountering that I love, but that he also developed three years ago or whatever. I am struggling to find candles that are fairly recent that match the sophistication and the care and the thought and the brilliance of some of those earlier candles. So I would just like to see from Harry going forward some new candles that 
deserve to be in the same category as some of his bestsellers from before. I'm very happy to continue getting these bestsellers from before, um, especially because I was not necessarily a Homeworks buyer back then, and I'm just, wherever, if it's at Marshalls or if it's a Rapport QVC or whatever, I'm just very, like the Tiare Sunrise, which was like a revelation. Very happy with those, but it makes me a little nervous that we are not seeing as many new candles that are equally brilliant. So that's what I would like to see. But I mean, I hate to pile on. I know that Homeworks has a lot they need to work through. And maybe Brilliance of Sense is like a little bit lower on their list than some of the other ones that are much more easily fixed, like a convenient website that's reliable, candles coming at a good time, strength and throw. I get it. But um, that's the only thing that I can say about these particular fragrances and the ones that I'm liking or not liking from Harry. I'm gonna link all the information down below. This one is available not only at shop.com but also on Amazon, so I'm gonna link both of those. This one unfortunately is not available anywhere unless you get it like off of eBay, um, this climbing clematis, but like I said, you may see it in your Marshalls or um, Home Goods, and it's definitely worth a look. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you in the next one.